All right, so I wanted to take a little time and just demonstrate some of the, show some of the work that I've been doing with the transportation workbench. Um, one of the things that I've been interested in doing is trying to reproduce some of the basic functionality that we seem to need in order to, in order to do highway engineering in 3D, um, in parametric 3D. Uh, and so one of the things that I want to be able to do is to be able to reproduce um, structures that are alongside a road or underneath a road. Um, for example, like a retaining wall, a sidewalk ramp, um, storm sewer that runs underground that carries water, or, you know, in this example here, this is a box culvert that actually goes underneath the road. The road would pass um, left and right here on the screen over top of the box culvert, and the water would flow from one side of the road to the other, from one ditch to the other side. Um, and what I want to be able to do is to generate structures like these and then just pick an alignment that's laid out in the model and sweep that structure down that alignment just to auto-generate, just drop that structure into the model and, and, and have it prepared and ready to go. Um, and, and I've actually had some success creating a 3D box culvert parametric model like you see here. Uh, for example, and this is going to be a bit of a mess, so bear with me, but if we take but what I've done is I've created this 3D box culvert and I've tied the uh, sketcher constraints that create the culvert structure to the spreadsheet. So if we go to a top view here, you see this road, it, this structure is rotated and we see I have a skew value of 5, so it's rotated about 5 degrees. If I change it to 10, you see it rotates to 10 degrees. Um, if we go back to our 3D perspective here, I can change my clear span and make it 24. So, oops, <laughs> that was a mistake, wasn't it? make it 24 feet and you see it widens out um, so I can sit here and I can adjust all the parameters of this box culvert and resize it however I may need as a highway engineer it's perfect that's exactly what parametric modeling is designed to do um, and uh, in the commercial software that we use uh, which is Bentley MicroStation they have they have a thing that does this and it's called a, a, a civil cell um, if you ask me it's substantially harder to use than this is uh, but there are trade-offs. Um, but all in all, I'm really happy with how well this has worked out in FreeCAD, and it's been really encouraging to me uh, to continue to try to develop um, 3D models for highway design and, and come up with 3D modeling workflow. Anyway, what I'm trying to do now is come up a way, with a way to automatically generate these structures and insert them into a 3D model uh, as quickly and simply as possible. So what I'm showing showing right now is a little bit of an update on that. So what I like to what I'm starting with now is I'm creating a template uh, that basically has the sketches that are that are swept to produce the 3D model. So for example, here in this template, you see I've got uh, three, well four, but three sketches that really matter. I've got this box one cell, which is a single cell box culvert, and you can see that there's the constraints, the wall thickness, the clear height, the clear span, and so on. All right, and then I've got the other structures like the head wall and the toe wall, which are actually appended to the top and the bottom of the box culvert. Um, and now I have them uh, centered on the origin because they're actually intended to be placed in another file and swept in that file. So this file simply contains the basic sketches which uh, are used then in another file to generate the 3D structures. So the process then, having created this file, the process then for actually building the 3D model and automatically inserting it looks something like this. If I start out with a with a file that has just a couple of what I would call alignments, you see these are just two separate sketches, sketch and sketch 001. Um, these could be alignments for box culverts, okay, and I'm in a top-down XY view. Uh, so in order to actually use these to create a box cover, the first thing I do is I pick each sketch and I create an alignment. All right. What that does is it creates a, a group Python object um, that, you, 
that uh, subjugates the sketches as their children. And if you click on the alignment object, you can see that I've added some additional properties, for example, starting station. So an alignment in transportation engineering has a lot of additional metadata about it um, called stationing, you know, ways of measuring where you are on the project. Um, and it's, it's extremely relevant to a transportation engineer, but completely irrelevant to dealing with geometry and free cab. So that's why the alignment object is there. Anyway, so if I want to place a box culvert in here, um, just, you know, to sweep it down in alignment, what I've done is, is I've required these alignment objects to be existing before I can create a box culvert. So if I want to create a box culvert, I pick an alignment and I go up here and I, for example, add one cell box. And then I can pick the other alignment and do it again. And now if we take a look at our view, you see that I now have two box culverts that have been swept down those alignments, right? And they're random colors. Um, now these are simply, now of course these box culverts are simply the single cell box sketch from the other file that's just been aligned to that alignment and then using the part design sweep tool swept down it. Now the thing is, is when you create an alignment like that, one of the things you have to do is you, you have to pay attention to the skew of the box culvert. So for example, if my uh, let's here. Let me let me create a sketch real quick in the X Y plane. <laughs> there we go. So if my roadway looks like this, okay. If my roadway looks like that, you can see then that the box culverts lie on a skew because a box a box culvert normally ought to be at 90 degrees or orthogonal to the center line of the road. If they're at an angle for whatever reason, we say that's on a skew, and that skew is measured by the difference between the angle of the culvert and 90 degrees. So if it's at 95 degrees, then its skew is 5 degrees. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to be able to manage uh, those issues, and one of the issues that comes up with that is if I create a box culvert on a skew, I need the end of my box culvert to be parallel to the center line of the road. Okay, well the easiest way to do that would be to go to pick the object and to draft the end and use one of these sides as a neutral plane. Okay, uh, and so what I've done is I've, I've created a tool which does that automatically. So if I want to uh, draft the ends so that I, I sweep them out so that I can make them parallel to the center line of the road. And let's go back to our top view. Um, first thing I can do is switch to my transportation workbench and I pick the end of the box culvert like so and then I choose the neutral plane which in the top view I'm going to want this side to extend out so that's going to be my neutral plane and then I come up here and I pick draft ends like so. Now I'll create some ugly colors because I've I've got some Z fighting going on because I've got uh, a draft shape in there now as well um, but there I've drafted one end and if we rotate this around now I want my neutral plane to be on the other side and I want to draft the other end as well. We'll see if this works. Nope. got to pick just the right face so I got to figure out what's going on with that and figure out how to deal with it but there now I've drafted both ends okay and of course we could do the same thing I'm not going to but we could do the same thing with the other box culvert now as you see I've got my two ends which are almost parallel now if I want to adjust the angle of those ends I could go down here drill through my hierarchy and pick my draft objects and adjust the angle directly. But what I've done is I've generated those using uh, an expression. And if I want to adjust them more easily, I, what, I, what I can do is when I generate a box culvert object, I also create a parameter object. So all I have to do is click on my parameters object, and you see here I have a parameter called skew, and my skew here is not great enough obviously. I don't actually know what this angle is. I didn't bother to check it beforehand. But obviously it's more than 15 degrees skew, so let's take it to 20. And now we see that's actually pretty close to 
the center line of the road. So just by adjusting the single parameter skew here in my parameters object, I can adjust those ends very quickly and easily. And then I can load up my parameters object with parameters that deal with, say, the culvert length and the, you know the span height and clear height and all those other things that you saw in the spreadsheet. Um, this you know, building out this hierarchy like this, um, I think makes an awful lot of sense. I think it's going to be a good way to help organize and manage these 3D structures uh, in FreeCAD more effectively. Uh, and I'm really, like I say, I'm really encouraged with how well and how straightforward um, this works in FreeCAD. And I really think that there's quite a bit we can we can do with this. So.